Welcome everybody outside, uh, wherever you are. Um, a warm welcome also in the name of JFD Brokers and my name as always for those type of webinars <coughs> is Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski. Yeah, it's uh, very nice to have you all once again here in uh, those kind of webinars, a little bit more sophisticated, a little more driven by uh, mathematics, statistics, and everything like that. Um, but I know there are a couple of guys out um, which are really interested in those approaches, those kind of uh, trading um, uh, approaches. Good. Um, yeah, there are some additional greetings here directly via the uh, chat, which is nice. You might use the the chat anyhow for anything you want to know in between um, you can use that chat to have a question anytime okay um, of course um, there's already a question <laughs> as a webinar is uh, recorded and you will find the webinar tomorrow um, morning maybe about uh, 10 a.m. Um, in the JFT YouTube channel and that is exactly what you might type into Google in order to find that uh, YouTube channel of JFT Brokers just uh, YouTube JFT and then you are directly linked to that uh, YouTube channel. I have not mentioned the date so we have the uh, 31st of May, so um, the month is nearly coming to an end, um, and we have a 7 p.m., at least in Germany. Good. Let me talk a little bit about the topic of today, pair trading on smaller time frames. Um, the one or the other might remember that we have had the topic pair trading more or less one year ago, a little bit more even than one year. It was in April uh, when I started with uh, JFD. Um, it was, I think, the first webinar at all uh, about pair trading. And um, at that time, we used uh, just the daily um, data. And it turned out that uh, there's a wonderful example for those kind of pair trades, and uh, that is the uh, two types of oil, uh, WTI and Brent. So, you know, we can trade, or we, there are um, two types of, of oil, and those two uh, underlying, those two oil prices are highly correlated, of course, um, and we found out that uh, there's a wonderful idea how to trade that pair. And you see, pair trading means always we trade two underlines. At that webinar, <clears throat> we developed already a good strategy on D1 base. And um, it turned out additionally that, for example, if we go for indices like DAX or S&P 500 on a D1 base, then it was not that profitable. And there's a, a story behind. What we always need is that those two underlines come together once again, so more or less, so that they don't um, diverge for a long time. So, for example, DAX goes for a long time up and uh, S&P 500 uh, goes for a long time just uh, to the south. But the bad thing is, from time to time, that happens. And if you have those kind of um, behavior, then we get in trouble with our pet rates. Therefore, today we go for DAX and S&P 500, but on smaller time frames, because then the overall picture is not that important as the overall picture in a sense like we have right now, or we have more or less since uh, uh, Mr. Trump is the president of the United States. Um, from time to time, we have strongly uncorrelated situations <clears throat> between the two markets um, and um, but on the other hand uh, we have um, and we will see uh, for longer time periods <clears throat> this this behavior that one goes up and the other one goes down which is bad on d1 but on smaller time frames uh, we can live with uh, those kind of behaviors 
As always, that, uh, just for introduction for today, as always, you know, <clears throat> you see already my email address later, uh, I will have a couple of Excel sheets once again. Uh, if you're interested in those Excel sheets, just send me an email um, at uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And uh, you can already download the slides of today uh, in, via the GoToWebinar control panel. Okay, let me go a little bit further. Oh, just uh, there has been a uh, question. There was a nice screen um, um, before we started, um, and I just quickly want to introduce what uh, you have seen there, um, because that is uh, something which is um, quite important for me. Uh, what you see here is um, an MT4, okay, <laughs> um, but that uh, MT4 has a special meaning, and um, this. MT4 is supervising all the other MT4s, all the different um, servers. You know, I, I use a couple of uh, virtual private servers, in total six. And on each of uh, those um, servers, they are running about eight uh, MT4 instances. And in order to supervise all those six servers and those in total um, 48 um, um, uh, MT4 instances, I use uh, that uh, new created uh, expert advisor from Peter because that is communicating with all the others. And if something goes wrong, I can realize it here immediately, which is really nice uh, because I get all the informations and I get an email if something goes wrong. Um, and um, if some uh, MT4 loses connection or an uh, expert advisor is not working anymore, all those things come on that one single screen and that is supervising all the other uh, servers. You see a lot of strategies, so most of them are running on live accounts. A few are in test phase, um, those with the account numbers uh, 11 in front. Yeah, um, so that was uh, that screen here. Um, I mean, you, you might... Um, have a need for something like that only if you trade that heavy like I do. But uh, for me, it's really important. So at first, of course, I have to mention the risk disclaimer. We talk about trading strategies. You know, I have to mention it, um, that finally, when it comes to your own trades, <clears throat> as always, you trade on your own responsibility and liability. Um, but you can use the information here. But your trades are your trades, of course. How do we touch the topic here? So I start with a basic idea, and we go always this webinar for DAX versus S&P 500. So two major indices, one for the German market and uh, the other one for uh, the United States. In principle, you can go for any other combination as well. You can go for Dow Jones versus S&P 500. You might go for the uh, Euro stocks uh, against DAX or against um, uh, the Cacaron, the, the French uh, index index or whatever. You have always two because it's a pair and uh, that is the base for everything here. And just to have the idea of that pair trading or sometimes it's called spread trading, I have a, a few pictures about that. But then we go for the general aspects of pair trading because we need <clears throat> to know a little bit more how to deal with that um, and we introduce the concept of market neutral trades trades which is very important here that we enter our trades market neutral and um, the one or the other might have heard of, about of market neutral trades already um, that is a topic which um, plays a role especially for for big companies um, they look for strategies similar to those um, because uh, they are not that risky if you go for um, smaller time frames on indices, then we have another problem, so to, uh, so to say, and that is how to get historical data, for example, for DAX or FDAX and S&P 500, because our standard um, data source, which we use for, in most cases, like <clears throat> Dukas Copy or um, Stock, um, they don't offer very good um, um, smaller time frames. Um, you can find them at Dukas Copy, but um, you don't have that uh, long history. Um, therefore, I introduce another uh, data source for that. <clears throat> and you um, 
we can get go um, backwards up to until 2010. And then the main problem comes when it comes to pair trading, because we want always to compare that or the one underlying with the other one. And the problem we need or we need to solve is that the two numbers represent the same time. That sounds trivial that you have two data um, columns with uh, DAX and S&P 500, but you have to synchronize the rows that you have exactly in the same row, the exact time, the exact, the exactly same time, uh, because we want to compare the, uh, the two with each other, and therefore that has to be solved. And there's um, a nice um, Excel formula, which helps us, and I will show that as well. And then, of course, we come to the final strategy of um, intraday um, pair trading strategy. The overall idea, I just want to illustrate in, in a, a normal standard chart. In this case, I use, uh, just for illustration purposes, an M1, so a minute chart uh, that was from yesterday morning. And we, what you have here is um, in the upper part, um, the DAX, and in the lower part, the S&P 500. Um, maybe not absolutely 100%, but um, it, for, for our case, it's uh, sufficient um, enough. Um, the two time scales are uh, identical. And uh, so that if you compare something um, vertically, you are always at the same time. But what does it mean now to have that pair trading strategy um, for those two indices? In general, what we can observe here, what we can um, clearly identify is the overall behavior of the two underlings is strictly the same, more or less. Uh, mathematically, that means they highly correlate. Um, if the one goes up, the other goes up as well. And if the one goes down, the other goes down as well. That's the normal standard behavior. And that's absolutely typical. And if you um, put some other indices here in the same chart as well, then you would observe the same things. So in principle, highly correlated markets. OK, understood. And we know that. But from time to time, time to time, we see some exaggerations or um, we see that that highly co the, 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 the correlation is not working 100%. And that might be even smaller details, but they will later trigger those pair trades. Let me start with one example here in the more or less in the beginning of the chart. If you look here for S&P 500, you see those three green candles going up. Okay. We have more or less the same situation. The middle candle is uh, for ducks uh, slightly red, but anyhow, we have more or less the same configuration within the ducks as well. But the ducks move has been much stronger than the S&P 500 move. And that later, we will do it mathematically, might trigger a pair trade. How does it work? If we realize in this case, the DAX is moving too fast or too far to the north in this case, then it would trigger a short trade in DAX and a long trade in S&P 500. So we, we and later we have to calculate that uh, that kind of trade is market neutral. But what we aim for is that the situation comes to normal once again. And that means the DAX has to go south. Okay, the S&P 500 might go south as well. That would mean, finally, if you look to those two uh, trades, the DAX trade will be a winner trade and the S&P 500 trade will be a loser trade. But if we have had that kind of exaggeration before, then the profit of the DAX trade will exceed the loss of the S&P 500 trade. 
So we we look for that deviation from normal, from normal correlation. And then we open the pair trade. And we open the pair trade in market neutral because we don't want to care about the overall market behavior. So the, the general beha behavior might go north or the general might go south. We don't care. The important part is that we have had that exaggeration, that one was moving too far. Ideally, we would even find situations one goes north and one goes south um, at the same time. That would even trigger a pair trade much stronger. But even if we only have that ex kind of exaggerations, um, it is a good signal for an entry for a pair trade. Let me show you two other examples within the chart. And I put, <clears throat> by the way, an EMA into the chart because that helps to find, even by the uh, naked eye, <clears throat> to find those exaggerations. Look for the behavior here. And um, you see it just by the slope of the um, EMA um, itself. But <clears throat> let's look, look for the details in, in within the candles. You see, we have a strong move north in the S&P 500. Yeah, we have a move north in the DAX as well. Okay, but not that strong. Once again, now this would tr uh, trigger a pair trade exactly vice versa. We would go short with the S&P 500 and long with the DAX, once again, market neutral. And we hope that that exaggeration comes to normal once again, which is the case here. And if you have a feeling for that kind of behavior, you find even <clears throat> other situations within um, that chart here. You have a tendency here. The DAX is um, overwhelming the S&P 500. You see that strong move north and no move in the DAX, uh, in the S&P 500. And all those kind of situations might trigger um, such a pair trade because the situation comes back to normal, which is within the chart as well. We will later see that those moves, those uh, deviations here are not strong enough in order to get profitable trades. As you know, we have always to cover costs as well. So that means we, we need uh, at least to earn the spread. So those deviations within that chart here are not strong enough. Um, that will turn out later. We get those situations maybe four times a month and not three times a day because there are much stronger deviations like uh, those examples uh, here within the chart. Um, but that comes out later. But you see the concept. Market neutral trades, we will, we will discuss next. And the other thing is um, we look for exaggerations as a trigger for those trades. Um, I shortly just uh, want to have a look um, live uh, how the situation is as we speak. And in this case, I have here um, M5 um, data for DAX <clears throat> and M5 for S&P 500. Just looking whether we can find a specific situation as we speak. And indeed, it looks not that bad. It's much better than yesterday in the German webinar. <laughs> because what you can see in the, the EMA helps you here. You see that the EMA um, in the DAX goes north and the EMA in the S&P 500 goes south. Wow, that's great. Because that means we, we are not correlated anymore, at least right now, within the last um, maybe um, 30 minutes. So here, the situation becomes really interesting. And how we would we trade? We would open a short trade on the DAX and a long trade on the S&P 500. So situation live does not look that bad. Um, it's um, exactly wise, wise to my, my positioning. But anyhow, we don't talk about uh, the ongoing trades here. Uh, that's not the topic <clears throat> right now. So what we need when we open that kind of pair trade, that's a general um, thing. 
we need to open those trades market neutral because we don't want to suffer. We don't want to get hit by any overall market behavior. Everything goes north or everything goes south. Um, that should not touch us. Therefore, we have to open that trade market neutral. Up to now, I always said, okay, the one short, the other long. You know, if it comes when it comes to trading, we need to open a, a, a specific lot size number. Uh, so maybe three lots ducks, and now how many lots S and P 500? That's a question, because we and you know that um, a one lot trade S and P 500 does not equal a one lot long trade ducks. So they they would not cover each other. Think about in percentage changes, um, both go 1% north. And that is what we want to have, that if both go 1% north, then that market neutral um, summed, summed up trade should not be, be um, touched anyhow. And that means we have carefully to calculate the lot sizes. And it's just an equation here. And uh, it's not really complicated. It might look complicated, but it's straightforward. And on the one on the left side of the equation, we have everything related to, let's say, underlying A. So we multiply the lot size, we multiply the price. Oh, that's still in German, sorry. Uh, Kurs is a price. Um, the lot size um, of um, underlying A times um, the price of underlying A divided by exchange weight of that specific underlying. In case of the DAX, and my, my, my accounts are in Euro, <clears throat> the exchange rate is, um, is simply one because the DAX is priced in Euro. So we would not have uh, that one here. On the right-hand side, we have the same cal calculation. <clears throat> lot size of the other pair. So let's call it B, or later it will be the S&P 500, times the price of B divided by the exchange rate. And now it becomes important because the S&P 500 is priced in dollar. So that's one part of um, why one lot S&P 500 is not equal one lot um, in the DAX. There are two elements, the price itself and the other is the currency. And S&P 500 is priced in dollar and the DAX is priced in euro. Let's go through an example how to calculate really practically um, the corresponding lot size for S&P 500 trade if we want to open the ducks with fictive 2.3 lots. Okay, then we need the other, num the other numbers. We need um, the price of the ducks. Okay, 12,670. S&P 500, then the numbers, by the way, have been from yesterday morning. Um, nearly 2,700, <clears throat> and the exchange rate Euro US dollar, which has been at 1.16. And now we can do the math. And it's really straightforward. So we multiply the lot size of the DAX trade with the price of the DAX divided with the exchange rate, just one. And then we divide everything by the price of um, uh, S&P 500 divided by the exchange rate. So it's nothing else than to solve that equation here, which is really not that complicated, for lot size B. That's what I have done here. And doing the math means finally we have 12.5. If you do backwards now the two sides of that equation, you will realize it's nearly perfect. You, we will not have a perfect fit, fit of uh, both sides. And the reason is simply because we have um, lot size limitations in um, and for, for those two indices, it's, uh, it's the step size is 0.1. So we don't have a, a 0.28 uh, possibility to open trades like that. So, but that's uh, fair enough here. <clears throat> so now I know 
if I go for a duck straight 2.3 lot and a, um, an opposite trade with 12.5 for S&P 500, then I have a market neutral trade. I repeat myself, what does it mean? If both prices just go up by 1%, then the summed up trade would not have any difference. So we would not lose any money because what we gain from what we profit from the one, we would lose from the other. And that's the concept. And you realize now what does it mean going for pair trades? It only makes sense if we have that deviation from normal, because then it's a good point in time um, to think, hey, it should go back to normal. And therefore we open the trade market neutral. The combined trade itself does not have a stop loss here. Um, because practically it, it, it's uh, difficult to set just uh, from the MT4 logic because you have to you would have to sum up the both trades. There's definitely no it's not a good idea to have a stop loss on the individual trades because then one would finally uh, end up in the stop loss and uh, then you don't have the pair anymore. But it's okay. Uh, the risk is um, um, is not that high. If you want now to really investigate um, at, at what kind of exaggerations, at what kind of deviations we should open the trades, we need historical data on smaller time frames. And that's indeed not that straightforward, <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, therefore, I, I spent uh, two slide, or one slide and one Excel sheet just for that topic here. And uh, I, will, I will show it a little bit more practical here, how we can synchronize uh, the data. So the first thing is, as I mentioned, we switched to another uh, data source and um, it's uh, www.histdata.com um, and I show the website uh, in a minute. And I mentioned already now, um, when you go for those data, <clears throat> they have a different time zone. Uh, those data are in the time zone uh, New York, so six hours difference at least for uh, Germany. And uh, there are um, two time periods in the year. Uh, one about in March and one in November or October, I forgot. Uh, when we have the summertime, um, then we have small, um, the, the change from summer to winter time and vice versa. Uh, then it um, deviates a little bit more. Um, but anyhow, the good thing is, if you go for that data source, both time frames are ident identical. So the timestamp of every source every every price is identical and that's exactly what we want to have but the problem comes from that uh, s p 500 has more data than um, the the dax which represents in this case the f dax so but that is what we have to make sure that we have the same um, data let me show you the uh, how it works with um, his data um, so um, that's the website of um, hisdata.com and um, um, you don't have to pay anything here so it's uh, free of charge you can just download uh, those data um, but there's one thing I have to mention <laughs> because that is really funny uh, you, you get data on M1 base so minute data for indices which is really cool um, but everything starts of, uh, of course with uh, Forex you can have uh, Forex data there as well but if you want to have uh, indices, then please look on the first page here uh, because they use really weird symbols. Um, and the S&P 500, for example, has a name SPX uh, USD, or the DAX has a name GRX uh, um, Euro. So it's a little bit funny, but um, uh, if you know it once, then you are fine. And then you can download the data and it's uh, looked like uh, the following. Um, so we go for download of data and then you can even choose. And that's some, something I want to mention here as well. For example, if you have um, an India trader, just another trading platform, you can already download the data is, um, directly for that platform. Um, which is cool as well. And uh, what we do is we go for MetaTrader data and uh, therefore M1 data. 
that you just have a feeling of how it looks like. Um, I do it here. So let me go for example, SPX uh, USD, which is uh, the S&P 500. And then you can see you get uh, zip data here for the different years and uh, for the actual year it's um, per month. Uh, let me just uh, download uh, once here uh, that uh, you see how it works. So we download the data and uh, then at, uh, let's have a look here for the data itself. Um, and here we are. And just I open it with an editor because then you see the structure of uh, those data and you see we have uh, it starts uh, with a date and then it's uh, um, the time and then open uh, high low close and there's some indication of volume but I think that doesn't work because it's always a zero. Once again those data are M1 data and they are on New York time. So it's really cool to have uh, that kind of data source, um, but we will later see that there are some data missing, some minutes are missing, and you know that the FDAX is in German time open from 8 to uh, 10 p.m. and the S&P 500 has some gaps uh, in the night. Uh, there are two time gaps um, in the middle of the night. So they are not identical. And now it comes to let's get them synchronized. Let me show you what I mean uh, and how I do that synchronization of the, do, the two data sources. Um, here we are. Let me enlarge it a little bit so you can see the logic. The so first I put is, you see, you can imagine those data here are DAX data, 12,000, starting at um, January this year. You see already what I have done. I have summed up the first two just to have a, a single column um, with the date and the time um, as one number. Okay, done. That's straightforward. And for whatever reason, the data started at 11.35. Oh, I have to mention that I first converted the data from M1 to M5 uh, because I don't want to have too, the, the number of data should not be too heavy, uh, too high. Therefore, I reduced from M1 to M5 to five minute data. Then I copied the same for S&P 500 next to it. And now you see that misaligning. So the S&P 500 data start at 9.45 and my DAX data at 11.35. Okay, I could delete everything here in, in the S&P uh, column uh, down uh, to, to here and move the rest upwards. Okay, but then later comes the next gap or misaligning of the two uh, data. It would be a nightmare to do this for a couple of years. And uh, you could spend uh, weeks or even months with that task. But now comes the trick. You see, I have an, uh, a new column here. Oh, it's just a copy of the date. Because my reference data I aim for are the DAX data. I know the DAX has a reduced data set in German time from 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, I have more data for S&P 500. So I want to use the DAX let's, as a major pair here, as a major index. And now I want to have in the same row the corresponding data from S&P 500. So that means here for 11.35, I want to have exactly those four numbers next to it. And you see in the first row, I have achieved because there we have exactly that uh, four numbers. Let me um, turn it a little bit more to the right. And the cool thing is you can do it with a single formula. And all you need is that kind of uh, formula. I don't want to go into the details, but it's more or less 
in the sense like search, please search for Z um, time, the time C1, which is the same here, search for Z time within those data from S&P 500. And if you found the right time, then please remember the line number and then it comes to the copy of that, um, that number from that specific line. And that's everything we do. It's something like search and insert. And that you can do with a single line, a single formula um, within Excel. And uh, then you just uh, have to copy it downwards and then you have the data exactly uh, synchronized. So that means within one line, I have starting here, the DAX values and the corresponding values for the S&P 500 as well. That's the source we need for investigation of our, of our trading setup, pair trading. That's exactly what we need. We have them synchronized. Of course, we will delete all lines which are, um, have no numbers, like, like uh, here. For whatever reason, we don't have data for 1220 for S&P 500. And then I do a simple step. I, I just say, okay, then delete the complete row. Uh, so just forget them. Um, and then uh, I don't care about that. It's not that often. Uh, we have some cases, yes, but uh, later here um, you will see um, no problem. Okay, that's to synchronize the data for pair trading. And it's extremely important. And even if you do pair trading on other time frames, even on D1, you will realize if you have downloads for two underlyings that some data are missing. Maybe the one is not um, traded on on a day uh, on, on um, holidays or special days in the year, and the other is traded. It's a nightmare to get them synchronized. Synchronized meaning in one line of Excel, we want to have the same time frame, the same timestamp for both data. So now we know how to organize the data. That's good, and then we can go for the pair trades itself. But first, let me describe how it comes to the trading strategy. Now we have to translate what I did within the chart to a strict logic for entries and exits of those trades. We need to define what we mean with exaggeration or deviation from normal that are nice words, but we need them a little bit more mathematical because we want to simulate um, <clears throat> that kind of um, trading approach. And how we do, we do it? The first thing is, um, I forgot to mention it in one in a single line, we, we calculate the ratio of the two underlines. That means simply the quotient. So dividing ducks to ducks price at the same time with the S&P 500 price at the same time. And now you see why we need that synchronization, that we have the data in one row for both underlines. So we, we simply build the quotient. The quotient is about five. Okay, so that's a ratio. Um, um, some people do not call it pair trading, some people call it spread trading, and some people call it ratio trading. Anyhow. Everything means the same. The next thing is we apply an EMA to that ratio. And if you, by the way, if you want to do it really in a chart, uh, then unfortunately you cannot do it in MT4, but um, there's a software which is called uh, Trade uh, Signal, um, and uh, that can do the job for you. And then you can do the, the ratio in a single chart, and you can apply an EMA to the chart as well. Okay. Done. We apply an EMA to that ratio. And now we look for something we did within mean reversion approaches as well. We look for the deviation from the 
actual ratio to the EMA on that ratio. And if we have huge deviation, then we call it a special situation. Then we have the non-normal situation, the exaggeration. Maybe one underlying uh, went north, the other went south, or both went north, but one much stronger than the other. And then you will realize that automatically by that deviation of the actual ratio from the EMA on that ratio. Now we know that one symbol is, with respect to the other symbol, um, more expensive, and we know exactly which one we go short and which one we go long. The too expensive one, the one which went, for example, too high north, um, that is traded short, and the too cheap one is traded long. That's the idea. So the entry is now defined when we exceed a certain deviation from the actual ratio to the um, EMA on that ratio. That triggers the open of the both trades. Next question, when to close? Quite easy. We do it when the actual ratio crosses the EMA once again. That will be the close. <clears throat> you will see in the next chart uh, exactly what I mean. And that's, that are the two things we have to know. Entry and exit. Good. But now let's go practical within that Excel sheet, which illustrate um, that kind of uh, logic. Let me first, before we go for the uh, nice or uh, the equities, how I do here everything. You see, of course, the, once again, the DAX data um, and that Excel sheet I show here is uh, only the four months, the first four months uh, of 2018. Um, I have another one, <clears throat> including the data of 2017 completely as well. Um, but as you will see, we have a huge number of data. Already those four months, we present 11,000 rows within the Excel sheet. And uh, so I do everything in that smaller Excel sheet only because uh, then it's easier to, to, to be handled. So we have the data, time, timestamp, and uh, then open, high, low, close. And we have the same for the S&P 500 data. And in a single row, we have the same the same timestamp for both. Then we calculate that ratio, which is really the one divided by the other. And we calculate that EMA, uh, you know, the standard formula for calculating EMA, and we can later change the EMA period here. Of course, we uh, calculate the difference of ratio minus EMA, and if that exceed, will exceed a certain threshold, <clears throat> then it triggers our trade. But in order to illustrate a little bit more what does it mean here, I go for this chart in, um, in front of everything else. For the first um, 1,700 data points, I use this chart. Um, the other one is, um, is here that's representing uh, let's start with a complete picture and then we go for the, the zoom in function here. So what we have here is for the complete data set. Uh, so the four months of um, 2018, we have that ratio in blue and the EMA on that ratio in red. What you can realize that for the first uh, two and a half months, um, the overall trend of that ratio is going south. What does it mean? The overall trend of the ratio goes south. That means if I divide DAX by S&P 500, the S&P 500 is stronger than the DAX because the ratio is getting smaller. Um, think about you make one of the uh, two uh, constant, then uh, you can immediately realize, uh, or you can answer the question, who is stronger compared to the other, 
the DAX or the S&P 500. In this case, the ratio is getting smaller, and that means um, S&P 500 is stronger than um, the DAX. And then it changed the overall behavior completely, and now it goes north. Okay, that's the overall picture. But that's not what we want to trade. Therefore, I zoom into uh, um, that kind of picture here. And then let's go for this at first. So that you can a little bit better understand what are the entries for uh, that strategy. You see, we have the EMA on the ratio, the, the red line. And then it comes at a certain level that we have a huge deviation and in here the deviation um, for the first um, 600 data points <clears throat> the deviation of the actual ratio is the highest from the EMA and that might trigger our trade and that is simply done here um, within the uh, Excel sheet if we exceed a certain threshold then we open the trade and in this case, it would be a short trade on the DAX and a long trade on the S&P 500 uh, because everything happens above um, the EMA and it would be vice versa. Maybe here at that point in time, we would open um, a trade exactly vice versa. But when we have opened the trade here, when do we close the trade? When we <clears throat> hit the uh, EMA once again. So we have, would have been invested from here to here, which is not that long. <clears throat> it's um, about just one day. Um, that's about 205 uh, candles. Uh, that's about one day. So it's not a long time, uh, long term trade, but it's a profitable one because it went back to normal. And that's all. <clears throat> that's the way we do. Um, all the rest is done within the Excel sheet here uh, to, to get everything calculated. We, um, and I don't go to the details, but you can have the Excel sheets here um, if you like, um, that we open the trade, we, we, we store when we open the trade at what price, and then wait um, to close the trade. And everything goes further here, um, but uh, let's not go into the Excel details. The only thing I want to mention is everything which comes up here to the right, please forget. That was uh, something from a previous webinar, and we don't use it uh, for those Excel sheets. I simply forget to delete everything uh, before, and uh, so just when you have that, uh, everything to the final right is um, not useful anyhow here. But now it comes to, good, to the good thing. <coughs> now we can change. We have only two parameters, uh, the EMA period <coughs> and that threshold value for the distance to open the trade. So a two parameter strategy is always good <coughs> because the less parameters, the better. In this case, the, the parameters are already quite well, um, but we, I will show how to improve it uh, even further. Um, so we, we, we can change the EMA uh, period and then we can look how the equity uh, will finally change. Equity, I have to explain a little bit. Originally, we have always two results for each pair trade. We have a result for the S&P 500 trade either long or short, or the uh, DAX trade, either long or short. And what counts finally is only the yellow curve, because we have to sum up the both trades. Right now, and you will see in, in the next Excel sheet later, um, the, the, the profits stemmed here for those eight trades, they stem from the S&P 500. Um, most of the, uh, the S, uh, DAX trades has been loser trades, but it's always with pair trades that you have one loser and one um, being the, the winner. The important thing is that the winner profits more money than the loser loses, which is the case here. And we can change EMEA, we can change that multiplier, but what we can do as well is we can do it automatically. And that's what I want to share with you um, as well. 
and maybe um, just to mention it, um, I do always everything in this called LibreOffice, which is an open source variant of uh, Excel. But unfortunately, um, if you want to use that automatically uh, optimization tool, um, then you need to install Java and uh, Java, and that's what I don't want to do. And therefore, I go for Microsoft Excel. So, uh, but only that's the only thing I do in Microsoft Excel. And what you can do here is you can just optimize it um, completely automatically. You need um, one single value which you identify to be re representative for the overall strategy. That's um, a certain number I calculate here. And then you just go to data and then solver, which has to be um, installed first, but uh, it's free of charge. And then you see already the logic, even that is in German, but just to illustrate the logic. That number should go for maximum here by manipulating, by looking, by varying the two values, one the one for EMA and the other one for that a threshold value. And for the two values, <clears throat> you identify um, conditions um, site conditions for minimum and, max and maximum because you don't want to have negative EMA values, for example, or you want to have negative um, thresholds or something like that. And so you need some, some uh, suitable numbers uh, being the lower limit and the upper limit. And then you just press solve and then the computer is doing the rest. I have started that exercise already. It sometimes takes... Uh, um, just an hour uh, to, to get it done, um, but I have done it already. And then you turned out those are the best parameters. And I go uh, st straight away already for um, the other one here, um, which is uh, um, having more data. That is now 2017 and 2018. And you see the yellow line here, which is the final equity curve doesn't look that bad and you see I have got the, uh, the parameters just by applying that um, solver logic from Microsoft Excel and it's not that bad. I have to mention that it's very important for those kind of strategies to include the spreads. Um, you Without the spreads, you will find even much better situations, much higher profits. But of course, you know, um, we, we, we need um, to incorporate spreads as well, because otherwise we, um, yeah, we are lying uh, ourselves. Uh, so we, we, we get not the right numbers. Strategy is really cool. It's not that many trades. It's about one or two trades a month. Only when that kind of deviation from normal is really high enough, then it's a trigger for <clears throat> um, uh, for a pair trade. And within that uh, time period, you see that's not always that the profits come from the S&P 500. Um, we have uh, other situations here as well. <clears throat> The good thing is yellow line goes north and <clears throat> that is the final equity for that kind of strategy. So it works well. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I have not already going down for data of starting at 2010 within Excel is simply <clears throat> too many data. This is already 40,000 um, rows. So Excel is getting um, slower and slower. So the next step is to do it uh, in self-written C programs and then I can do that kind of job and optimization even for a longer period. But I'm already convinced from that kind of strategy. Even going looking for the right entry points within the day. And I know that we don't have the problem if we go for a D1 based uh, strategy, which does not work for S&P 500 versus um, DAX. Um, this one here works, but still we don't have <clears throat> that many trades. But it's fun, uh, fine enough. Good. So that's the overall strategy. That's the logic. And you can do calculations by your own if you want just um, 
send me a note that you want to have those Excel sheets. Uh, I will not directly send them. It will be a link uh, once again to a Dropbox because um, the data size is in the range of 20 megabyte um, per sheet. Uh, so um, that's nothing for email. Uh, so it will be just a download link. So I can go for my summary for today. So in a nutshell, <clears throat> pair trades, it's always important to remember, pair trades are market neutral trades, which makes them quite interesting even for bigger investment companies. But only if we are in a situation of being not normal, being in an uncorrelated state, being in a deviation state. And those one we can identify even on smaller time frames by looking for the ratio and then comparing the actual ratio to an EMA on that ratio. And if that deviation is exceeding a certain threshold, then it's time for us to trade. And the trade itself is once again market neutral. And we go for the idea that the market comes to back to normal. The trade frequency, even if we start our trades on smaller time frames, is um, quite moderate. Um, but uh, I have expected something like that uh, even before I start um, investigating this strategy in more detail, <clears throat> because he, the strategy of just looking for the costs of trade uh, it can't be that you can get that much money every day with 20 trades on those two pairs, uh, it cannot work out anyhow. So trade frequency is still quite moderate. <clears throat> and of course, we can investigate other pairs as well. And um, other indices um, to be compared, no problem. And it's now straightforward with those Excel sheets to do uh, that kind of investigations as well. Once again, I'm, if you want to have those, just send me an email. I can't, unfortunately, I cannot um, put them for download directly here within the GoToWebinar control panel because um, I'm only allowed to, to have their um, uh, PDF documents. I assume that's uh, because of uh, virus and something like that, but uh, I don't know exactly. You can get them and that's a good thing. Okay, that's for today, but... Let me mention already uh, that the webinars for June are already on um, plan, so you can find them already on the event page of JFD, um, the JFD website. And the two webinars I do in June, is one will be related to real stock trading, which is of interest for a lot of people, to look for real stock trading, not CFDs. No, we, we trade real stocks, uh, just buying uh, Apple or buying, I don't know, Goldman and Sachs. So a different kind of trading style for going for um, real assets, real stocks. And uh, the other one, um, is um, related to something we did already similar. Do you remember we have that duck stay of week strategy, looking for the right times for uh, of a day? And uh, I've done some work on that in order to get a quite good strategy uh, similar to the duck stay of week strategy. And there are even uh, more to come uh, with similar logics, different underlyings, and it's quite cool. You will see. Okay, that's for next month's uh, announcement for those two webinars. I hope that you will find the way to those webinars as well. And for today, have a nice evening. The only thing I can say right now. So enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.